My name is John Moffat and this is an introduction to the Advanced Financial Management Exam which used to be called Paper P4 uh, and I want to uh, talk only briefly uh, about what's in the exam, the syllabus, the way it's examined uh, and how to go about studying for it. Uh, now incidentally, although um, this changed its name, it's no longer called P4, it's called AFM, if you um, have previously taken P4 and perhaps failed and are retaking it, uh, then don't worry, the, the syllabus hasn't changed at all, only the name. Uh, and as you'll see, there is one change to the, the actual structure of the exam, but it doesn't affect your learning. Uh, anyway, as far as the syllabus is concerned, it does carry on from the previous financial management exam, which used to be called paper F9. Um, and as a result, you should really recognise a lot of the headings, uh, one of the five headings on the syllabus. Uh, but the first, the role of the senior financial advisor, you know, what the financial manager's job is. Deciding how to raise money, deciding how to invest it in long-term projects. Um, all right, extended because we talk a lot about multinational organisations, so you'll see later um, investing in projects in other countries, that sort of thing. Uh, advanced investment appraisal. There was a lot of investment appraisal in the earlier paper, what was paper F9. And all of the uh, investment appraisal side is asked again in advanced financial management together with quite a lot of extra things as well. Uh, now, I know there's a danger that uh, some of you may have not taken the earlier paper because you were exempt, in which case you should have done it at university. Uh, others of you may have taken the earlier paper but may have forgotten things. Uh, well, in my lectures for the advanced paper, I do revise what was in the earlier paper. Um, but obviously, some of the fairly basic bits, I go through pretty quickly. If you do come to something that you're really not sure about, then look back at the relevant financial management lectures. Uh, but you shouldn't really need to. Uh, as I say, most of what matters, I, I do actually revise. Uh, but I've had some investment appraisal, and that also includes not simply net present value calculations appraising your investments, but also the raising of the money and the cost of capital. Uh, there's a massive amount involved there. Uh, acquisitions and mergers, uh, something that doesn't really have extra techniques involved. Um, but um, the approach, uh, you know, how we value other companies if we're buying other companies and that sort of thing. Uh, but again, I deal with it all in the lectures. Uh, reconstructions, reorganisations. A lot of that is really financial accounts, to be honest. Uh, but gets asked uh, reasonably frequently. A uh, company perhaps um, is having problems and there's a risk of going bankrupt. Uh, in, they want to carry on and so they come to an arrangement perhaps with the lenders of renegotiating the loans or perhaps giving them shares instead of a loan and ways they might raise more capital in order to keep the business going. Uh, Treasury and advance risk management techniques. Part of that, you should have seen at the earlier exam, managing foreign exchange risks, but there's more in this exam. Uh, managing interest rate risks which uh, you are expected to be aware of in the earlier paper, but no calculations. In this exam, there are quite detailed calculations. And in addition, one or two other risk management techniques. Now, to talk with through them all in detail now would be silly, obviously. The full syllabus is on the ACCA website, but in my lectures, I do work through all the relevant areas. Albeit, I'm coming to the structure of the exam, but the examiner has said that in every exam there will be one question primarily focused on investment appraisal and one question 
not necessarily entirely, but primarily on risk management techniques, which is almost always either foreign exchange risk or interest rate risk. Uh, having said that, the structure of the exam, those of you taking P4, you'll see uh, the old name for it, there is a change. There are still two sections. Section A is one compulsory question of 50 marks, which is obviously a huge question. Easily two or three pages of information. It takes a lot of reading. Uh, but then there are several parts to it. It's never just do this for 50 marks. Part A, do this, five marks. Part B, do this, 10 marks. Part C, write about this, six marks, and so on. Um, but a compulsory question of 50 marks. Section B, there used to be a choice and there no longer is. There are two compulsory questions of 25 marks each. There are only three questions on the paper and they're all compulsory. Uh, the section A one, almost inevitably, uh, will uh, involve writing a report. You'll be asked to write a report on something. Uh, you'll need to do a lot of calculations to get the figures for your report, uh, but you are expected to write out a nice report with you know, a proper heading. No standard there, but you know, headed up nicely, report on this, and introductory paragraph and so on. Uh, there are four professional marks, just for the style. Uh, your calculations, you're expected to show as an appendix separately. And although now is perhaps too early to say, it's better after you've studied, but it does make sense to do the way around to do the appendix first in the answer book with all the workings you need, and then after to write the report. So it doesn't matter on the order, as long as you do a head up the pages properly, appendix, report. Uh, anyway, there's the structure of it. Um, it's all paper-based, there is uh, no computerised version yet. Uh, you're three hours, 15 minutes, uh, and as always, the pass mark is 50%. As to how to study for the exam, um, I don't know, you may have already used our website for earlier papers, but if not, everything on our website is free of charge. Uh, the important bit being the notes and lectures, uh, you can download free lecture notes, but they are only lecture notes, they're not meant to be a study text. They'd be used with the video lectures, uh, and it's in the lectures that I work through the examples, uh, I explain what's in the notes, I expand on the notes. So it's essential you do the two together. If you're not watching the lectures, then you're going to have to buy a study text from one of the approved publishers. Uh, in addition, we've got two sets of forums. Uh, one um, is for students to discuss with each other and to help each other. Uh, the other is Ask the Tutor Forum, where if you come across anything you're not clear about or you, you don't understand, if you ask, if you type your question in that forum, then uh, I always reply, certainly within 24 hours. Now, um, um, the notes lectures do cover enough to be able to pass the exam well, but it is practice is absolutely vital. It's vital for any exam. It's even more vital uh, for this exam. And you must buy a current edition of a revision kit or maybe called an exam kit from the, one of the approved publishers, either BPP or Kaplan. They're as good as each other. Uh, but you must. Uh, I know there are, <coughs> excuse me, I know there are past exams available on the ACCA website, but firstly, that's not enough. There are only um, a few years there, and you can't practice enough. You must practice. There's so many different questions you can ask. Uh, and also, even if you manage to get hold of older questions, the syllabus has changed over the years. You know, the, the current examiner came in, what, eight years ago. Uh, prior to him, the syllabus was a bit different. And so the danger is if you get hold of old papers,
is that you may be attempting things that are no longer examinable. Uh, whereas, if you've got a revision kit or an exam kit, all the questions there, we've got all relevant past exam questions. They include really old ones. If it's were taken out of the syllabus, they've amended them. But you must buy one of those and practice every question on it. Uh, finally, uh, just a couple of three ways, in fact, you can help us. The only way, uh, since everything's free, the only way we can expand and improve on what we offer is if more people use us. So please do spread the word, do tell your friends about our tuition. Um, do subscribe to the YouTube page. When you watch uh, any lecture, then in the top left, if you hover your mouse, a button appears to subscribe. It's free, but uh, it helps us. Uh, and do help other students on the forums. Uh, I said there's a forum for students to help each other. Um, and it is useful, you know, if you, if you can explain to somebody else who's having a problem, um, it's a good way of finding out for yourself that you really understand and that you can express it. So, uh, you know, do help people. Okay, so there we are. So, off you go. Download the lecture notes and start working through the lectures in chapter order.